What is up guys, it's Gabe back again with another video on the GOAT channel. Are you tired of being that friend being left out of the group chat because you're a green bubble boy? Are you tired of people judging you because of the cellular device you have? I know I am, and I have a solution for you. Now I'm going to preface this video by saying that I, I'm going to get a lot of people asking, Gabe, why don't you just buy an iPhone if, if you got to go through all this trouble to set this up? Um, and my answer is going to be, I just don't want the restrictiveness of an iPhone. I want to have an unlocked experience with my cellular device. Of course, there's more to it than that, but today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get iMessage on your Android device using an application or a service called AirMessage. Now, with this, you're going to be getting all the iMessage features, all of Apple's encryption um, with the iMessage app. Um, on your Android device. So basically you get the read receipts, you get the attachment sharing that we all know and love, um, and you get the message effects as well. There are a few things that are needed prior to making this work. One thing that is needed is a computer that is running Mac OS X 10.10 or higher. Now this is needed to run as a server that allows your Android device to communicate with the iMessage servers. And then, of course, you're going to need an Android device that is running Android 6.0 or higher. This is just to have the application, the messaging app, to send those messages to the computer or the server. The Mac device that I'm going to be using today is a Mac Mini from 2014. I have seen videos where people can use Mac Minis from all the way to 2011, as long as the Mac device is running uh, Mac OS X 10.10 or higher, you'll be fine. Um, I, you can go on eBay and pick up a Mac Mini from 2011 for around 50 bucks. So for just $50, you can get iMessage. I, that's up to you if you want to spend that money on that. But I already had the equipment, so I just went ahead and did it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in and get this bad boy set up. I'm finally going to be a Blue Bubble Boy again. Alright guys, so here we are on the Air Message website itself. There is going to be a couple of just a splash theme. Um, it's going to go over some of the features that you get when you use the service. Of course, it's any like any iMessage service. A couple things that are missing um, are like the games and uh, like you can't really express the way you send the messages, I guess. You can see that, of course, but you can't send it through your Android device. So here is the link to download the Air Message server for your Mac OS. Um, basically, I've already installed it. I've, I mean, I've already downloaded it. I haven't installed it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a window here and get that installed. Now, when you open it, it has to verify the application to see if it's from a trusted developer. And of course, it's not. So it's going to give you this message right here. Basically, what you have to do now is go into System Preferences, um, find the Security and Privacy button, and go ahead and go into that. So once you're in here, you'll just click on the General tab, and this will um, show you a prompt at the bottom here that says Air Message was blocked from being opening or being open because it's from an unidentified uh, developer and you want to go ahead and open anyways of course and then type in your password um, I forgot my password so I have to go ahead and type it in again but once you get that you'll be able to just click open here and once you open the application itself it's going to show you a prompt welcome to the air message server you want to click on open preferences right here it's not going to show you a lot of information of course but there's a couple pieces that are really crucial to this process one thing you need to do is go ahead and set your password. Now this password is going to be used for going into the application itself and logging into the server. So you want to make sure it's a password that you will remember, but you also want to, at the same time want to make sure it's super secure so that way no one can get into your server. We do not want that. So once you click on OK here, it'll go ahead and save and you are done with that step. So next thing you want to do is add the um, application itself to a trusted list of um, applications that can access your messages. So you, you do that by going into system settings, um, or the system, yeah, system preferences, go to security and privacy, and you click on privacy, and then you click on accessibility, click that plus button right there that I just did, find the application itself in your list of applications, and add it. 
Now, what you want to do also, if you're doing this off a laptop for any reason, you want to make sure that the system doesn't go to sleep. If it does go to sleep, it'll bug out the server and it won't work. You won't be able to send messages. Um, I'm doing this off a of Mac Mini, so my I have a toggle here that allows me to prevent the system from sleeping um, when the display is turned off. So I don't have to worry about that. All right, so the next thing you want to do is go ahead and get into your router settings. You could do this by go ahead and locating the IP address of your router and typing it into the search bar of your browser. Um, I have the Night Nighthawk Netgear uh, router, so I have the application that lets me see the IP address from my app. So I just typed it in and it took me here. And you, once you log in, you could go into the Advanced tab and go ahead and go down to the Advanced Setup. You're going to click on Port Forwarding and it's going to bring up a screen that allows you to um, add a port forward. What a port forwarding does basically is it allows your um, router to know that your phone is communicating with the Mac specifically. So um, Netgear makes this really easy. I go ahead and name the uh, service name error message so it knows. You want to go ahead and for the protocol just select TCP and then for the port range it's usually 1359 by default and it you, it wants to set a range in some cases but in this case you could toggle it to use the same port um, I just go down to the list of devices that are that is already connected to my router and select on the Mac mini and boom once you have this done it is up and running and ready to go So most IP addresses are dynamic, which means they're constantly changing. And this can become a problem because if your IP address changes, your phone doesn't know what to communicate with or what uh, server to communicate with. So to fix this, we have to go ahead and get a dynamic DNS provider that tracks IP address changes. Uh, and this is to ensure that the app is always able to connect with the server itself. So you're going to visit this website. This is a service I decided to use as Dynu Systems um, and sign up for an account. And when you go to sign up for an account, it's going to ask you to um, enter a domain name um, and choose a level for that domain. I just picked my YouTube channel name and ooguy.com. Of course, I've already created an account, but once you get past this step, it will ask you to pick a username and a password and all those other credentials that you need. Um, and once you have it completed, it will show this right here, showing that you have a up and running domain name. So um, in order to proceed to the next step, you have to download the IP update client. And what this does is update the IP address constantly so that your phone and your system or the server are on the same page and that can all, they can always communicate with each other. I've already downloaded it here, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Of course, the you want to go ahead and drag the uh, software to the applications folder and I do that here and once you have that done you can go ahead and just click on the icon itself to run the application this is a application from an unidentified developer of course so you're gonna wanna go back into your system set is settings or your system preferences and um, allow it to run of course you do that again by going into security and privacy going into the general tab and clicking on open anyway and once you have it open, it'll open up this window here and you could use your credentials, your username and password to go ahead and log in um, so that way you can update the IP address constantly. And once you've inputted all your information, you can go ahead and hit save and it's going to give you a prompt saying that all the server information is OK and that the IP address has been updated. You can go ahead and close this window out and without having to fear about it running in the background because it is going to run in the background constantly updating that IP address. Alright, so once you have those steps completed on your computer, you can go ahead and go to your phone and download the application from the Google Play Store. So it's really easy to access. And then it's going to ask you to enter your server address. So this is just going to be your domain name that you put for your DNS um, IP updater. So I go ahead and put my information in here. And for the password, it's going to be the password that you submitted on the error message uh, software that is on your computer as well. So make sure you remember that and you have that handy also. And once you have been able to sign in, it's going to ask you if you want to download any of your um, old messages. So I go ahead and download the messages. It's just a couple here. Um, and that's it. Once you get to this step, you're done. You know that you have been successful in this process. You could start sending those glorious blue messages. 
All right guys, so I have the application set up on my phone. We went through the steps to set it up on my Mac. I'm gonna show you guys that this actually works. So right now I have my brother's phone in my hand, which is an iPhone, and I have my phone in my hand, which is the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Um, now I'm just gonna punch in his number here and send him a message. Boom, that just sent. And as you can see, it sent him a message here. And if you pay attention to the chat thread, you'll see that basically it was green before and now it is blue. Um, turning on or signifying that it is an iMessage message. Um, if you look at the contact name, however, you'll see that my email is appearing instead of my actual cellular number. Um, that just means that it's using the iMessage account that you have on your computer already to send those messages. So as long as you're fine with that, this is a foolproof method. It's the best method that we currently know um, that will allow you to send iMessage messages off your Android device. Well, all right, guys, that concludes the video. If you guys like what you saw, go ahead and drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this setup, this uh, tutorial, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Um, if you like what you saw and want to see, keep seeing content like this, go ahead and sub hit that subscribe button for me and ring that notification bell. Like always, guys, thank you guys for watching so much, and remember to always stay great.